All right. Hi everyone. So um, this is a revision on chapter one. Now chapter one, what you need to focus on is, and I can't change the slides, man. Okay, there you go. All right. Um, nah, 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 nah. Well, you know, a lot of our chapter one has been covered in the mid semester exam. Am I going to ask about history? Uh, not so much. I just want you to kind of focus on this one particular Disney movie in the history part. Okay? So go and read through it and focus on that one Disney movie. Um, what else? Uh, this one uh, is too basic. I do want you to focus on, in particular, this one, NURBS. So read about NURBS, uh, what is it's about, really understand how NURBS are different from your normal polygonal mesh and you know what they are basically. And also understand what subdivision surfaces are. So that's the two things that I want you to focus on, basically NURBS as well as subdivision surfaces as well as that one particular Disney movie in the history part up here okay and that's about it for chapter one because a lot of it we've covered in the uh, mid-semester exam and all these questions from chapter one only come out in the section A alright now so here's looking at chapter 2. Chapter 2 is about computer modeling methods. Um, as far as section 1 goes, um, let's see, what do it, did I put? What will I ask? Uh, no, no, you've done this a lot. Uh, yeah, this one here. Alright, I want you to really understand what the digital sculpting method is uh, pay attention to this one uh, also the other one that I want you to focus on is basically these guys okay modeling with texture and animation tools method really read through this uh, understand what this one is texture displacement how do you model this kind of thing what what is it good for and so on uh, how you use bones to model perhaps and also dynamics what it's all about uh, what are the two categories and what objects uh, you know suitable to model using this method uh, all right uh, what else let's see that's in section A, the multiple choice questions. And when it comes to the structured questions, uh, what I want you to really understand is, um, I mean, I did ask you to focus on NURBS in chapter one. Really understand how NURBS is different from uh, subdivision surfaces and the box modeling method is partly the subdivision method if you see here uh, you know you start with a box and then you do your base mesh and then you apply sub D so that is actually uh, subdivision surfaces in action like what you see here so really understand how the mo the box modeling method works I'm gonna ask this in section B in structured questions and how that can be different from using NURBS really understand NURBS. I mean you've done this in the labs you've experienced how to draw curves and use a, a NURBS operation to create those surfaces so differentiate from this one and that one and you know you know how they can achieve the same result perhaps but why subdivision surfaces is more powerful in NURBS in some cases okay all right um also in section B, the structured questions is this one here, the 3D scanning method. So really read about this and really understand about this, how it's different from one to the other, from a contact scanner to a non-contact scanner, 
Um, I'm gonna ask about that, of course. And finally, one last thing is, mm, uh, in particular, the build-up method, but not everything. I just want you to read about the retopology process. Uh, I showed you an example of how retopology works and why we use it uh, in the lectures. So if you, if you, I mean, I think it's good if you really understand what retopology is. Here we have a description. If you don't really understand it, go Google it up. Uh, learn about what retopology is. It's part of the build up method and why do we use it and and so on. How it works and so on. And that's about it for chapter chapter two. Alright now. So we're looking at chapter three here. Chapter three in section A. Uh, section A, which is the multiple choice questions. Hmm, let's see. Not that one. Alright, here it is. So, I want you to really focus on these slides from here onwards. Uh, how do you collect reference images? What you should stay away from and the reasons for it. Alright, so uh, it's not so much about recalling but really understand these slides here, what I'm trying to explain here. And, and I will ask a question about that in the multiple choice questions. Whereas in uh, section B, um, I mean mostly I'm gonna ask from, um, let's see, I mean not all this, oh this one here, okay. So I might ask, ask questions about this, like if you're trying to model something, uh, you know, you could probably ask these questions. Well, this is actually just ideas on what to ask, but it, it does help you to answer the question um, in section B. What else? Let's see. Um, this one's here. Where do you get your reference material? The common resources. Uh, it's not so much about, you know, I'm not gonna ask like, what are, give me three uh, common resources. No, I'm gonna not gonna ask about that. But what I want you to do is really focus on this. Understand what each one of these is. And you know, perhaps you know, I might ask questions like, why is a tape measure beneficial? Why do you, how we can use it? How a sketchbook is you know beneficial uh, to be used as a common resource and so on. Okay. And you know, just go through this list and uh, really understand how one is beneficial from the other. And of course, you know, you got to cover this. Uh, this is also included in section B. So really understand it, read through it, understand it so that you can explain and articulate your answers later on. And that's about it. Alright, so this is chapter 4. And chapter 4 is a bit special. And I think you should kind of focus on this one a bit more. Because it's going to, the questions are going to feature in all three sections. Sections A, B, and C. So let's go one by one. Section A, uh, for this chapter, um, let's see now. Section A is multiple choice, by the way. So I'm going to ask about beveling. So understand what beveling is. Alright. Read through this slide here about beveling and also let's see now well you know we have all this right you know all these operations like cutting polygons insert edge loop extruding beveling detaching attach welding soft selection right so all this stuff they're all operations and you've been using it in maya you should have a good grasp of 
you know what each one does how you can use each one in a different situation like for instance extruding why is it good maybe you want to build fingers maybe you want to build i don't know you want to do a window you know lots of things so really understand where you can use extruding and how it's different from perhaps beveling so i'm going to ask that kind of question between one operation and the next okay so pay attention to that uh, whereas in section B, which is a structured questions where you need to explain a bit more, uh, I will ask about this thing here, the manipulator gives more orientation. There's basically two ways, by world or by local, in Maya it's known as object. So understand this one, read through this slide, really understand it. If you don't know what it is, ask your friends or you can ask me as well. But really understand how by world is different from by local. I, it's not so much about memorizing and and you know answering again uh what and, and writing it down again i want you to really understand it and and differentiate between the two okay by word and by local here um as well you know we talk about inserting edge loops why you want to insert edge loops uh you know really understand why we add edge loops okay I mean, and it's covered here in this slide, but as well, it's, you know, it's somewhere in the back as well, like, you know, soft edges here, like, like here as well, you know, about inserting edge loops, okay? So really understand all this. Um, all right, and also, you know, the well command, how it's different from the rest. Why do we use the well command? How to execute the well command? What are the safe techniques uh, when you use the welding command? Okay. All right, and mm, yeah, and read through this. Uh, I did. I did mention that you need to understand why we need soft edges. Uh, obviously is to make things not look too 3D or too CG you know so but but really read through this and and understand why we need soft edges and you know it's also related to this part here which is beveling all right all right I mean it's basically the same thing and read through it that will feature in section D now the last part is section C and I did mention where section C is the modeling methods question so that's why i say this chapter here is very important basically it has all the operations that you've been using in the lab you know how we use an operation uh, cutting polygons all of this stuff beveling detaching attaching and all this stuff is what you've been doing in the lab and section c the modeling methods question is basically me giving you a picture and I want you to come up with the best way to model that thing if you notice here all of this is all polygon polygonal modeling I mean just like what the chapter says but there are many modeling methods remember there's NURBS there's, uh, um, there's uh, digital sculpting and all that so of course we haven't done digital sculpting so I'm never gonna ask about how to execute the digital sculpting I will ask about this one here polygonal modeling stuff in section C as well as the NURBS modeling and that's why you need to uh, really understand what NURBS modeling is it's covered in the previous chapters before chapter 4 uh, understand how you can build those curves and you've been doing it in the lab and you should know that you know if you draw a curve what kind of operation you should use just go through the lab tutorials all the love all the uh, revolve all the uh, what is it extruding of these nerve surfaces how do you get a certain nerve surfaces when do you use a certain nerve uh, modeling tool and so on okay so two things nerve modeling and polygonal modeling like what we see here okay so that's going to come up in uh, section C and that's about it for chapter 4 alright so now we come to chapter 5 which I have to say uh, good news for you because we don't cover a lot of chapter 5 the only time you're gonna see chapter 5 is in 
section A, the multiple choice questions. And in particular, uh, I'm going to ask about polygon count. Polygon count. Alright? This guy, polygon count. Just understand why do we count polygons. Okay? That's all I want you to do. This side in particular. Yeah? Not all this. I think I already asked this. Not too sure. But, but yeah. Just focus on this guy. Why do we count polygons? Okay? And that's about it for chapter 5. Hooray. Right. Now we come to chapter 6. Chapter 6. In the section A. Uh, what do I cover? Well. Quite straightforward. But if you have to read. Not all this. I'm not going to ask all this. Don't worry. No, no. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I, I think it's somewhere here. Let me just look closely. Um, yeah, I get... Uh, yeah, I'm going to ask about this. What shaders are. Okay. And the answer to it is not here, actually. But, but... Um, if, if you know what shaders are, if you've been using Maya a lot and when you're doing the assigning new material, right, and then you assign either a Fong or a Lambert, which is the default one, or you use a Blin, or what we normally do, and I hope a lot of you do it in the project, is to assign it with the Arnold AI standard surface shader. So I'm going to ask about shaders. That's going to come out in section A. Okay, so understand what shaders are. Okay, in particular what shading, what shaders are. What else? Um, no, no, no. Um, this one here, texture mapping. Okay, so there are, like, you know, these are just examples like this. And these are the seven most common mapping techniques there is. Which one do you need to focus on? I would say this one here. Transparency mapping. So I'm going to ask this. Understand what transparency mapping is? Why would you use it? In what cases, what scenarios we can use it? Uh, you know, stained glass effect. Or use, uh, you want to simulate a hair. Or grass. And that kind of thing. So focus on transparency maps. I'm going to ask about that. Alright, so that's section A from this chapter. Um, other stuff is, this is a really long chapter, but uh, don't worry, I'm not going to ask everything. Let's see, where is it? Huh? I'm looking at Fresnel. There it is, the Fresnel effect, okay? So I want you to really focus on this. This is going to come out in section B. Understand what the Fresnel effect is. Read through it. If you don't understand, read more online or from the textbook. Um, but pretty much everything is here. If you really read through this, you, you will understand what the Fresnel effect is. Basically, what I'll do is I'm going to give you a picture, an image. And I want you to kind of study it in terms of the Fresnel effect. So if you want to answer that correctly, just read through this slide. And... And make sure you can explain what the Fresnel effect is based on what you see in that image that is being given. Alright, so that's that. So we come back to here. In section B, I will ask about this again. Uh, but, which one? Alright, so that's uh, something that you need to... I guess you need to really read through this. All this stuff, basically, okay? So I'm going to ask... Uh, a lot of questions are going to come from here this one here onwards let's see mapping surface attributes am I gonna ask about color mapping maybe maybe not um, specular map maybe not maybe yes uh, in kind of, uh, of course this will come out in section A transparency maps okay uh, displacement mapping um, yes maybe and bump mapping of course so I'm gonna ask about bump mapping and I'm not just gonna ask what is bump mapping if you notice bump mapping and uh, normal maps right they, they have something similar as well as the third one which is displacement maps so you have displacement maps 
which uses a black and white image. We see this in chapter one actually. Uh, no, uh, in in chapter two, the one with modeling methods. Okay, so understand what displacement maps are. How it's different from bump mapping. How it's different from normal maps. The three different things, and really understand all these three. Okay, I'm gonna ask that in section B. And that's about it, I guess. Let's see. Let me just go through. Yeah, that's about it from this chapter. Okay, so. I'm gonna focus, really understand about maps, uh, displacement this maps. Okay, how they different from one and the other. So focus on those those two things, and that's about it from this chapter, which is chapter six. All right, so chapter seven, it's all about scene setting. Now, it's not gonna come out in section A, but all of it. I mean, not all of it. Some of it is going to come out in section B. And which ones? Well, here's a funny thing. Uh, yeah, of course, it's split into two. Cameras and exposure and composition and staging. I'm not going to ask about all the camera stuff. Don't worry about this. I will not ask about the camera stuff. What I want you to focus on is this one here, composition and staging. And it's not so much that you half file you memorize and write it down what I want you to do is understand how we can improve our composition it means that how we stage and how we set up a scene how we place a camera you know what you want to take care of how you can use the rule of thirds why the rule of thirds is useful why it gives you that pleasing I mean it's not so much of the why but you got to understand the why so that you can answer it as well so uh, what happens here with this chapter is I'm going to give you images and it's up to you to use uh, all these you know I wouldn't say rules but tips on how to improve your composition all this five stuff rule of this how to use positive and negative space what is graphic weight and how it shows in your image and how you can employ it to improve your composition how lines are useful, what kind of lines appear, how they can form as uh, a graphic element in our images, tangencies, uh, and whatnot. So all this stuff, okay, go read through this. And it's again, it's not so much about memorizing, but really understanding this. And if I, uh, a lot of the questions on this chapter in section B, the structured questions, I will give you images and you need to elaborate it explain it like like how um you know how we can use it how we see tangencies in there and that's going to affect the image and so on okay so go read through this this part here all the ones the stuff from composition and staging onwards towards the end for this chapter all right so now we come to chapter 8 Chapter 8 is a bit uh, It's a lot Okay, so I will ask in section A In particular, not all this um, This one here The types of light, the different types of light So read through this, point lights, spotlights Read through it um, Directional lights sky domes what they are okay um, how you know we use it it's also called IBL image based lighting so read through all these types of light okay all right um, as well as you know how you know when we talk about spotlights we talk about penumbra angle what it's for I mean you if any of you have been using it you we know that it creates that softness at the edges so that's what it is but it also we also have that discussion here in the qualities of light somewhere here at the back here okay so read through these two slides as well it's related to the types of light so read through the qualities of light uh, you know all those this stuff here and how we can replicate that in here the different types of light okay so focus on those two parts uh, I will also ask in section A on somewhere at the back here. Where is it? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, here it is. Ambient occlusion. 
understand what ambient occlusion is. Remember, it's in section A, so I'm not gonna want you to really explain, you know, what it is, the main idea, blah blah blah. No, just understand what ambient occlusion is. Okay, so what it is and how we can achieve it, and so on. So that's from that's for section A. Whereas in section B, the structured questions, then we go back to the front here, at the very front. Let's go back to the top. I will ask questions on, on this one, the visual goals of lighting design, all right? And also, if I ask about lighting, I will ask about shadows, the visual functions of shadows, so those two things. That and uh, also we already talked about the different types of light so really read about this I'm gonna ask this again in section B and finally the last part is uh, remember this guy at the end subsurface scattering so what this is all about what is subsurface scattering where do you see it happening um, yeah, uh, and I will ask you about this and explain it how subsurface works, okay? So, uh, given an image, um, you're able to understand how subsurface scattering works in that, in that object. That's going to come out in section B, alright? Alright, so that's about it for the lighting chapter in chapter 8. Um, see you in the next one. Alright, so good news for all of you. We're now in chapter 9. What am, what am I going to ask? Not so much. It's just going to come up in section A, the multiple choice questions. What am I going to ask? Well, basically not all this. This is just for your info. I will ask this so in the physically based rendering, okay? PBR. So, please do read through it. Hmm read right through it right through the end not so much energy conservation but um, this one as well okay so well, well basically uh, everything la. <laughs> from here onwards sorry about that okay so I'm not gonna talk about all the algorithms I'm not gonna ask about that I will ask about this PBR so read here onwards towards the end just go through it understand what they are Mind you that this is a multiple choice question, so if you understand what it is, you'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It's just only two questions in section A, okay? So that's all I'm going to cover from this chapter, and that's about it. Uh, before I end, I just want to wish you good luck for the exam. Read through it. Don't worry, it's not as tough as you think it is. I'm not that mean. You'll be fine, okay? So, uh, good luck for the exam, do your best, and do study, and study smart. Thank you very much. See you around.